Okay, welcome back. What I want to do today is to introduce you to a brief history of time. And it's the time of the individuals who has had an effect on the electrical industry and electricity as a whole. The men who put their names to the ampere, to the vault and so forth. These men made it possible for us to be having the energy today that we have and made it possible for us to recognize. Now, even though some of them weren't taken seriously, but they have been taken seriously ever since. Right, so electricity, a brief history of time. And what I want to look at is Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin set out to prove one thing, that naturally occurring lightning and the spark produced from amber were one and the same. On the 15th of June 1752, he famously flew a kite during a thunderstorm that was attacked that was attached to the ground by an iron spike. Attached to the kite was a metal key. As the lightning struck the kite, an arc of electricity jumped from the metal key to his wrist. Later, theories seem to indicate that he was somehow insulated. However, this was still an extremely dangerous way to prove his theory. It was. Alessandro Volta, and I hope I pronounced his name correctly. Okay. In 1800, as the result of a professional disagreement over the galvanic response advocated by Luigi Galvani, Volta developed the so called Voltic Pile, a forerunner of the electric battery which produced a steady electric current. Volta had discovered that using moisture between two different metals, electricity is created. Volta had determined that the most effective pair of dissimilar metals to produce electricity was zinc and silver. Initially, he experimented with individual cells in series, each cell being a wine goblet filled with brine into which the two dissimilar electrodes were dipped. Now, in this way, a new kind of electricity was discovered. Electricity that flowed steadily like a current of water instead of discharging itself in a single spark or shock. Walter showed that electricity could be made to travel from one place to another by wire, thereby making an important contribution to the science of electricity. The unit of electrical potential, the volt, is named after him. So you can see these guys, they had to experiment themselves. They did not know the answer themselves, but by experimenting, they were able to arrive at some solutions that enabled them to create other things. Michael Faraday. The generation of an electrical current on a practical scale goes to the English-born and self-educated Michael Faraday. His interest in electromagnetism discovered by Danish scientist Hans Christian Ørsted infused him enough to take early experiments even further. The question he asked was if electricity could produce magne magnetism could the reverse also be true? Well, we now know it is true that magnetic, ma you move a coil in a magnetic field and it will produce a current. In 1831, he began his, his greatest, he began his greatest series of experiments in which he discovered electromagnetic induction 
you found that if we moved a magnet through a loop of wire, an electric current passed through the wire. His demonstrations exposed the concept that electric current produced magnetism. Faraday then used the principle to construct the electric dynamo, the ancestor of modern power generators. Thomas Edison and Joseph Swan. Now what did they do? Let's have a look. Nearly 40 years went by before a really practical DC direct current generator was built by Thomas Edison. In 1878, Joseph Swan, a British scientist, invented the incandescent filament lamp. British scientists invented the incandescent filament lamp and within 12 months Edison yeah. Edison made a similar discovery in America. Swan and Edison later set up a joint company to produce the first practical filament lamp. Prior to this, electric lighting had been crude arc lamps. Now Edison used his DC generator to provide electricity to light his lab laboratory and later to illuminate the first New York street to be lit by electric lamps. In September 1882, Edison's successes were not without controversy. However, although he was convinced of the merits of DC for generating electricity, other scientists in Europe and America recognized that DC brought major disadvantages. George Westinghouse and Nikola Tesla. Westinghouse was a businessman who had become very interested in electrical power distribution. When he looked at Edison's scheme, he decided that it was far too inefficient for the large sizes he hoped to produce. Edison's power network was based on low voltage DC, which meant large currents and serious power losses. Several European inventors were working on alternating AC power distribution. An AC power system allowed voltages to be stepped up by a transformer for distribution, reducing power losses and then stepped down by a transformer for intended use. A power transformer developed by Lucien Gillard of France and John Gibbs of England was demonstrated in London in 1881 and attracted the interest of Westinghouse. Transformers were nothing new but the Gal Galliard Gibbs design was one of the first that could handle large amounts of power and promised to be easy to manufacture. In 1885 Westinghouse imported a number of Galliard Gibbs transformers and a Siemens AC generator to begin experimenting with AC networks in Pittsburgh. Now Nikola Tesla. Now an AC motor was a more difficult task, but fortunately a design was already available at least in principle. The brilliant Serbian inventor Nikola Tesla had already dreamed up the basic principles of a polyphase electric motor. As luck would have it, he had come to the United States while in the employ of the Edison company. Tesla and Edison didn't get along well. Tesla and Edison didn't get along well. One reason being that Tesla was interested in AC systems and quickly parted the company.
Westinghouse got in touch with Tesla and obtained patent rights to Tesla's AC motor. Tesla hadn't actually built a working motor at that time, but Westinghouse hired him as a consultant for a year and helped turn his polyphase AC motor into a reality. The work led to the standard modern US power distribution scheme, three phase AC at 60 Hz. This was chosen at a rate high enough to minimize light flickering but low enough to reduce reactive losses. James Watt James Watt's model of the steam engine converted a machine of limited use to one of efficiency and many applications. It was the foremost energy source in the emerging industrial revolution and greatly multiplied its productive capacity. Without it, humans might have continued to provide power. It was also essential in later transportation advancements such as the steamboat and locomotive. With his partner Matthew Bolton, he had battled against rival engineers such as Jonathan Hornblow, who tried to develop engines which did not fall foul of his catch all patents. Bolton proved an excellent businessman, and both men eventually made fortunes. It was when what steam engine was later coupled with Edison generator that large scale electrical energy generation became a practical proposition. Jan Mary Ampere. André Marie Ampère, a French mathematician who devoted himself to the study of electricity and magnetism, was the first to explain the electrodynamic theory. A permanent memorial to Ampère is the use of his name for the unit of electric current. It is on the service that he rendered to science in establishing the relations between electricity and magnetism and in developing the science of electromagnetism or as he called it electrodynamics that Ampere's fame mainly rests. On September 11, 1820 he heard of Ofsted's discovery that a <coughs> excuse me discovery that a magnetic needle is acted on by a voltaic current on the September the 18th he presented a paper to the Academy containing a far more complete exposition of Ofsted discovery the whole field does open up he explored with characteristic industry and care and developed a mathematical theory which not only explained the electromagnetic phenomena already observed but also predicted many new ones. In recognition of his work in this field, the measurement of electric current was coined after his name. George Simon Ohm. Ohm, a German mathematician and physicist, was a college teacher in Cologne when in 1827 he published the galvanic circuit investigated mathematically. His theory, theories were coldly received by German scientists, but his research 
was recognized in Britain and he was awarded the Copley Medal in 1841. Ohm's name has been incorporated in the terminology of electrical science in Ohm's law. The proportionality of current and voltage in a resistor and adopted as the SI unit of resistance, the Ohm symbol. Okay, I hope you found this useful, okay? I'm just going to recap, back up slowly to make sure I've got everything in view, okay? Okay, thank you. Hope you will find this useful. Have a good day. Bye-bye.